Hi and welcome to my channel. In today's video I'm going to be giving you a rundown of the top five true crime podcasts that I have been listening to over the past couple of months. So I am obsessed with podcasts and I love true crime and I feel that those two things go hand in hand. If you like videos like this then I would love it if you join the fam and subscribe to my channel. I do videos like this one often as well as motherhood, lifestyle and a little bit of beauty mixed in. So please do click that subscribe button. Without further ado I'm going to jump right in. The first podcast that I am going to be talking about is confronting OJ Simpson. This podcast revisits the murders of Nicole Brown Simpson, ex-wife of sports star turned Hollywood actor OJ Simpson and another guy called Ron Goldman. Ron and Nicole were brutally, brutally murdered at Nicole's home. And OJ Simpson went on trial and was very famously acquitted of their murders. So Confronting OJ Simpson is presented by Kim Goldman, who is the younger sister of Ron Goldman, one of the victims. So straight away, this is a really interesting perspective because I haven't really heard that much from the Goldman Goldman family with regards to the murder it's very much coming from the OJ Simpson and Nicole Brown Simpson side of the whole story so that automatically drew me in to wanting to listen to this podcast so Kim interviews her own father she interviews prosecutors investigators witnesses as well as some of the jurors and that is really interesting because she gives them the opportunity to explain that not guilty guilty verdict. It's a really good insight into the fact that Kim and her father who were just relatively just normal people were thrust into that media frenzy under the media spotlight and she talks about all of her experiences and what she went through. She talks about the day that she found out about her brother's murder as well which is so heartbreaking and she goes into how her and her father live with the grief of losing a family member in such a horrific, tragic way. Kim Goldman is definitely a character that you will warm to. She's really very calm when she's giving these interviews. She doesn't interrupt anybody even if she doesn't agree with them or their stance on certain points. She respectfully lets them speak and I think the whole podcast is brought from such a dignified, open and honest place and I think that people have a lot of respect for Kim. It's so inspirational the way that she's made this podcast and it's like kind of almost a bit of a healing process. She's speaking to these people especially in terms of the jurors who acquitted a man that she very very much believes murdered her brother. I mean she refers to OJ Simpson throughout the entirety of the podcast as the murderer. One of the other things that I think was really interesting was that there's an episode in it that explores issues surrounding domestic violence. Now before Nicole Brown Simpson's death she did actually call the police on a number of occasions because she was scared for her life and it was very disturbing to listen to those recorded phone conversations that she made to the police because she was clearly terrified. So I think that it's really good that Kim addresses domestic violence and the issues around domestic violence because it was something that played a huge factor in this case in particular. And she speaks to experts on the subject and it is such an insightful thing. One of the great things about this podcast is that you get the perspectives of people that you don't ordinarily hear from. As I mentioned, the investigators, certain members of the defence legal team as well. There's people who didn't get to speak in the trial, witnesses who were discredited for one reason or another and also those jurors. It's really interesting to get an insight into what they were thinking and how they ended up with that verdict. So that is my first podcast recommendation. My next recommendation is To Live and Die in LA. The story behind To Live and Die in LA started at the beginning of 2018 when aspiring Hollywood actress Adea Shabani disappeared from her Hollywood apartment and her body was ultimately discovered 400 miles away from the apartment in the Sierra Nevada mountains. So the case starts out trying to find Adea 
and then ultimately trying to find out who killed her. So this podcast is in 12 parts and it's hosted by Neil Strauss and it follows the twists and turns in real time through recorded telephone conversations with the friends and family of both Adea and the man who is suspected for her murder. His name is Chris Spots and he was the boyfriend of Adea. The good thing about this podcast is because it follows the story in real time you do get the reactions of Neil Strauss and the other investigator and you get the family's responses as well to certain events that happen within the podcast. I'm not going to deep dive too much into what happens in the podcast because I really wouldn't want to ruin it for anybody who wants to listen to it but there's definitely reactions to certain unexpected events that happen and I will leave it at that. Another thing that I found really interesting about this podcast in particular is how much we are all tracked using our mobile phones. The thing that blew the case wide open with this one is that Chris Spots' mobile phone or cell phone was tracked doing a certain journey at a certain time. And it goes to highlight the fact that his choices in having his mobile device on him and constantly being online, being tracked by Google and whatever, it's just, it's quite scary really when you think about it. But in this case, it's it's a good thing because it helps to explain what happened to Adea. One of the good things about To Live and Die in LA is that it finishes with a conclusion. Now sometimes with true crime podcasts, especially when they're talking about cold cases, which to be fair this one isn't, but they never really get that conclusion. But in this one I think most of those loose ends are tied up and you come away from it with I wouldn't say being satisfied because it's such a sad story. I must say with To Live and Die in LA, I didn't really like it for the first probably three or four episodes and I was a little bit like, mm, should I continue with this or should I move on to something else? But I am actually glad that I stuck with it. I can't even really put my finger on why I didn't like it straight away. I think maybe it was because it seems to be, how do I put it, quite sensationalist in terms of it being about Hollywood and aspiring Hollywood actors. Adea was an aspiring Hollywood actress, she was really talented and Chris Spots was also an actor as well. So. I don't know, I can't really describe why I didn't like it at first, but I just didn't. I'm going to leave it at that, but if anybody else found the same thing or totally disagrees with me and loved it from the get-go, then please do leave your opinions in the comments down below. I'd love to get a conversation started. The next podcast that I'm going to talk about had me all kinds of intrigued and to be honest it didn't disappoint and it is called The Clearing. In 2009 a lady called April Belasquio, I think that's how you pronounce her name anyway, contacted a detective with suspicions that her father was linked to a cold case and that case was the double murder of two people that happened all the way back in 1980 when April herself was a child. Eventually it was proven that she was right in her assumptions and it led to her father's arrest and ultimate conviction. Her father actually turned out to be a serial killer and his name is Edward Wayne Edwards. So that's the backstory to this podcast which is hosted by a guy called Joshua Dean and April is very very heavily involved in the creation and the narration of this podcast as well. So already I think that this one was positioned slightly different from other podcasts that I've listened to because it's from a different and really interesting perspective and it's that of a family member of the accused rather than family members of the victims and the victims themselves. So that was one of the things that automatically drew me in and made me become really obsessed with this podcast. The clearing definitely concentrates on the aftermath of 
of the conviction. When April was a child, they upped and moved around the country on a whim. So her father would wake them all up in the middle of the night, pack them all into a van and drive off to a new place, usually under the guise of the fact that bad guys were coming after him. But actually it was because he'd committed either crimes or murders and had to go on the run. So April pieces together all of these crazy little details and tries to find any links to any unsolved murders in the numerous locations that her and her family lived when she was a child. Before his death in prison, Ed Edwards basically confessed to a few other murders and it's likely that he was involved in so many more. April is not what you expect at all. She's so warm and friendly and she strikes up the most unlikely friendships with the families of the victims in cold cases. She tries to find any links to her father and if he was involved then her main aim is to give the victim's family closure and she's just the warmest and loveliest person and so often you feel really sorry for her because she's been robbed of having that father really she just sees him like everybody else does as a monster and it's really sad but she is such an inspirational person finally this podcast goes a long way to debunking conspiracy theories ed edwards has been linked to some of the most infamous cold cases in history, cases like the Black Dahlia and the case of Jean Benet Ramsey as well, but it has been proven that he's had absolutely nothing to do with them. So because April is so heavily involved in this podcast, it's clear that she's just trying to get all of the facts out there, debunk any myths and concentrate on the things that did actually happen. The next podcast that I'm going to talk to you about is called Man in the Window and I'm sure that anybody who's really into true crime will definitely be able to talk about the Golden State Killer because it's something that is unfolding in real time. So last year in 2018, Joseph James D'Angelo was arrested after DNA evidence was discovered linking him to multiple horrific rapes and murders which were committed in the 1970s and 1980s in California. So this podcast is in eight parts and it is presented by Paige St. John and it talks about this particular criminal and the fact that he was known under a plethora of different aliases. So he was known as the Visalia Ransacker, the East Area Rapist, the original Night Stalker and eventually the Golden State Killer. And he was known by those names in different areas of California because he moved around to the entire state of California committing the most horrendous crimes. One of the most interesting and also heartbreaking parts of this podcast is that they delve deep into the attitudes towards rape victims in the 1970s and 1980s. It's just so upsetting that women who have been traumatised by these crimes were just kind of ignored. A lot of family members in particular saw it as something to be ashamed of and these women were encouraged to never talk about what had happened to them and went for years just bottling up this horrific trauma. Obviously things have changed quite a lot today but it was really difficult to hear about what those women were subjected to first off and then it was like they were abused all over again by society in terms of cover it up, let's not talk about it anymore, to move away and pretend it never happened and that they were just supposed to be like robots and just erase the memory of what happened to them. So the women who spoke on this podcast I think are so brave and I think that it was so important to give those women the space and the platform to be able to share their experiences as well and yeah it, it was really heavy hitting. It's not an easy listen and this case in general is harrowing because he was such a monster. It also talks about when the cases, because you've got to remember that police in the different counties where all of these crimes were happening hadn't linked together the evidence that this was actually the same perpetrator committing these crimes. The Golden State Killer was known under different pseudonyms in different counties. And because it took so long 
to make the connection between these cases and for it all to be brought together and for this perpetrator to be known as the Golden State Killer. All of these crimes went cold and obviously there was the statute of limitations on rape victims as well. So they must have felt like there was absolutely just no hope and there was multiple occasions when some of the evidence almost got destroyed because different departments had run out of room to keep the evidence and the detectives working on the cases took it upon themselves to take the evidence home with them and have them there in case they got any leads further on and luckily enough that did actually happen and the evidence is still in existence. The last thing that I loved about Man in the Window podcast is that it gives insights to Joseph James D'Angelo himself. Paige St. John interviews the people that have known him all of his life pretty much, including his ex-fiance who was a lady who was engaged to him when they were both teenagers and she talks a lot about how he behaved when they were together and a lot of warning signals that came up when they were together and eventually she ended up breaking off the engagement and many people have since pointed fingers at her saying that it's her fault that some of these crimes happened because he'd uttered her name in different situations when he was committing these horrific crimes. That's really interesting and it also talks to childhood friends and people that had grown up with him and it talks to ex-colleagues as well and how he behaved when he was in a working environment. It's just so insightful. There's so many really interesting perspectives. A Man in the Window is definitely a podcast to listen to, particularly if you're following the case of the Golden State Killer and everything that's been happening since the arrest of Joseph D'Angelo. The final podcast that I'm going to be talking about is called 22 Hours, An American Nightmare. And honestly, they're all harrowing and they're all tragic but this one has really stayed with me for so many different reasons but I'll give you a little bit of context as to what 22 hours is about. So in May 2015 a married couple Savas and Amy Savopoulos, their 10 year old son Philip and their housekeeper Vera Figueroa were held hostage and brutally murdered in the Savopoulos' home in a really wealthy area of Washington DC. The bodies were discovered by firefighters who were trying to put out the fire that was pre presumably set by the murderer in order to destroy evidence and they quickly realised that what they'd found here was a crime scene. 22 Hours is a 10 episode podcast and it was created by the local reporters who reported on the trial day to day and they are Megan Cloherty and Jack Moore. A lot of the content was taken from actual recordings of the journalists phone conversations so one of them would be in the courtroom taking notes and then would report back to the other one in the office and it included some of the conversations that they had in the day to day of the trial. One of the most harrowing parts of this podcast is the recounting of the coroner's evidence which describes the victim's injuries and exactly how they died. You could just tell as Megan was talking to Jack, she'd obviously heard all of this evidence. She'd seen these awful crime scene photos and she was clearly quite traumatised so that was upsetting to listen to. There's quite a complicated trail of evidence which actually survived the house fire and there was also voicemail recordings from Savas and Amy uh, before they died which is really strange to listen to. Basically, they were complying with the home invader's demands. He wanted money and Savas was obviously a wealthy businessman and he was trying to get cash funds without raising suspicion. When you hear things like that, your mind wanders to how was he being blackmailed in order to do this? Were they threatening the life of their 10 year old son? Was he threatening the life of his wife and the housekeeper? When you think about what that poor family and, and Vera Figueroa went through, it's just so upsetting. One of the good things about this podcast is that there are Q&A episodes. So people that listen to the podcast were able to write in with their questions and Megan and Jack were able to answer them the best that they could. One thing about this case is that there's so many questions still and 
it's frustrating but you can imagine that that's quite true to life there was a lot of things that other people have been wondering that i'd been wondering so it was good to hear any explanations or takes on those questions so yeah there was two of those q a episodes which were slightly shorter than the other episodes if i remember correctly it's so sad it's harrowing but it's told really well and i think it's told from a place of great sympathy and it's almost graphic without being exploitative if that makes sense I, I think that Megan and Jack the journalists do it with such respect and respect for the family and it's it's really well done but it's not for the faint of heart all of these podcasts that I've listened to have been very different but are tackling some really horrendous subject matter and I think these ones in particular have done it well. If you've got any true crime podcast recommendations then I would love it if you'd leave them down in the comments below. If you've listened to any of the podcasts that I've been talking about today then again share your thoughts and feelings in the comments and we can get a bit of a conversation going. If you've liked this video then do give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you're new to my channel and I'll see you in my next one. Bye!